Quality Improvement Plans and Quality Improvement Science, the Basics. In this video series, we will present a very quick look at QI science and how its basic methods can be used not only to help you create your QIP, but also to make progress on your indicators. Welcome to the first in our video series, QIP and QI Science. My name is Alice Strawn, and I am a Quality Improvement Specialist with Ontario Health, and I hope you enjoy this video. As mentioned, this video, identifying the problem and determining your aim statement, selecting indicators, is the first of a three-part series. Session two is how to diagnose what the root causes are for your problem, and session three is how to identify change ideas and process measures for the indicators you have chosen for your QIP. Our goal is to build your capacity to not only create your QIP, but to use it to guide your QI efforts throughout the year by using the tried and true model for improvement and plan do study act cycle. It is recommended that you watch these videos in order to get maximum benefit, although they can also be viewed as standalone. Understanding your problem is like the prequel to your QIP. In order to understand what you want to focus on, the indicators, and what you want to achieve, your target, you need to first understand your problem. By watching this video, you will learn why identifying the problem at the start of your QI work is important, know how to create a solid problem statement, and understand how the problem statement is related to your aim and indicator selection. Here is Edward Bayer coming downstairs now, bump, bump, bump on the back of his head, behind Christopher Robin. It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming downstairs, but sometimes he feels that there really is another way. If only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. How many of you have felt like you were Edward sometimes and just wished you had the time or a method to figure out a different way? We are all Edward Bear. We have been bumping our heads knowing there is a better way. The QIP enables you and your organization to not only test that better way, but to do it in a way that promotes learning, innovation, and sustainability. The QIP tool is the documentation that enables you to not only think about change, but to test it out and report on results for learning. The conversations and engagement around the QIP are key to your improvement work. No video on QI is complete without the model for improvement, but what we are talking about today, identifying your problem, comes before the first fundamental question. And what you want to do in order to address the identified problem is your aim statement. So think of this video as the prequel to the model for improvement and your QIP. Once the problem has been clearly articulated and agreed upon, then you can begin to answer the three fundamental questions, starting with aim. What are you trying to accomplish? Which we will touch on today as well. This will help you to choose the appropriate indicators and targets and select your change ideas focused on the problem you are trying to address. Here is how the model for improvement maps to the quality improvement plan. As you can see, there is a perfect matchup between the three fundamental questions of the model for improvement and the elements of the QIP. In the QIP, what are we trying to accomplish is the provincial quality themes and dimensions. How will we know that changes and improvement is reflected in QIP as standardized priority indicators with organizationally determined targets? And what change can we make that will result in improvement in the QIP is organizational planned improvement initiatives with process measures. And here's how it maps out on the work plan. What are we trying to accomplish? Is there as your aim? How will we know that change is an improvement? Is in the measures section. What change can we make that will result in improvement is in the change section. So let's talk about identifying the problem. Before we begin to try to solve something, we need to be sure to understand what the problem is. It may seem silly to say, what is the problem? We, see, we will think that we know the problem, what the problem is, but it may be that the problem actually doesn't exist once you look at the data. This might be known as the squeaky wheel problem. You hear lots about it, so you think it's a problem, but you may only be hearing one loud voice. And when you collect data, both qualitative and quantitative, the problem may be minor or may not exist at all. It is also possible that what you're hearing about is really a symptom of a problem. And just like the medical system, if we only treat the symptom and not the disease, we will only be able to create reactionary change and not fundamental improvement. And just because something is not currently a problem doesn't mean it won't become one in the future. If you are performing well on an indicator, that's fantastic. But it doesn't mean we don't still want to collect data to be sure we are sustaining our great results. In the QIP, the mandatory indicators are system-wide problems that collectively we are trying to improve. Custom indicators allow you to choose to look at other issues which are problems within your organization. 
Let's talk a bit about the difference between a symptom and a problem to be sure we are on the same page. A symptom is what tells us there is a problem and there may be multiple symptoms of a problem. What we want to define to ensure we are looking at fundamental change at a system level is the actual problem. The problem is the gap between what is happening and what we want to have happen. I'm going to use a generic example throughout this video about getting to work on time. Perhaps I decided to look at this because I noticed I was getting behind on my work and initially I thought that was the problem. But getting behind is actually a symptom of the problem, which is I'm not getting to work on time. Five W's and two H's is a framework for writing a problem statement. Not to be confused with the five Y's, which is a method of delving into root cause that we will discuss in a future video five W's and two H's. By answering what, why, where, who, when, how do we know, and how much, it ensures that we have fully described the problem. Answering each one of these as a QI team will be a rich discussion, and we'll also ensure that we are all seeing the problem in the same way, or at least agree on the problem from different perspectives. Having the appropriate people involved in this discussion is an important first step towards engaging others in both the creation and the implementation of the QIP. More often than not, a QI project will likely be rooted in a problem you are trying to solve. The indicators in the QIP are tied to problems that have been identified in the healthcare system. However, if what you are trying to do is create something new, you may have an opportunity statement because there really isn't a problem. You have just figured out a way to make something good even better. This is where you might create and report on a custom indicator, as you have identified an opportunity to do something new as opposed to a problem to be addressed. An opportunity statement, though, is still one or two sentences that identifies and summarizes the opportunity and describes what it is you want to improve and what the intended outcomes will be. In order to provide an example to illustrate some of the content, I am using this example of being late for work. So in this late for work problem statement, the what is that I do not always arrive to work on time. The where is work. The why is multiple reasons which are controllable. The when and how often is at least three days per week. Who is affected? Myself and my coworkers. And how do we know it's a problem? Starting to get behind. This is a good example of focusing on the problem, late to work, not the symptom, getting behind. You are familiar with the column marked AIM and the quality dimensions still below it on the QIP. As you'll remember, the quality dimensions are efficient, timely, patient-centered, effective, safe, and equitable. To show you an example, let's say you are a hospital and what you decide is your problem is readmission and you feel it's because people don't have enough information when they're discharged. Your aim then for the purposes of the QIP would be to increase the percentage of patients who indicate they received enough information when they left the hospital. And the, that's the indicator. And 90% is your own selected target. So in summary, clearly articulate your problem so that you can ensure you're working on a problem and not a symptom. Five W's and two H's. Be sure everyone sees the problem in the same way and agrees that it is affecting patient outcomes and therefore is an outcome-focused improvement opportunity. This is the prequel to your QIP. Share your problem statement with others, particularly those on the front line, and patients to validate that all see it as a problem. Everyone should be able to understand your problem statement and see where they fit in the improvement work. This is the first step towards engaging others in your QIP. Collect data to know that the problem truly exists. Be aware of the squeaky wheel identification. One loud voice does not mean there is a problem. 100 quiet voices might though. Focus on indicators relative to your problem to create the most opportunities for improvement. Your QIP is intended to help you prioritize your QI efforts and focus on indicators that relate to problems you are experiencing and set targets, aims, that focus on what improvement looks like for your organization. Here are some additional resources. Quorum, is a great place to go to look for more information on quality improvement. Here is where you can learn, share, and collaborate to improve healthcare quality in Ontario. Within Quorum, there is a QI tools and resources section with a searchable database of tools, templates, and resources to help you diagnose what is contributing to your problem. There's also a section on indicators and change ideas. These are change ideas grouped by indicator that have been gathered from previous QIPs and is a great place to go and look for ideas on what you might try in order to address your problem. 
You can also go to the QIP website and QIP Navigator. There you'll find all the templates for the quality improvement plans. You'll find the, the guidance documents, the indicator technical specifications, and the overview of quality priorities for the current year's QIPs. You can also connect with a quality improvement specialist at Ontario Health at the following email address, qip at hqontario.ca. We'll also be providing some additional webinars about what's new in the QIPs, help sessions that are focused in interactive guidance on key topics, drop-in sessions where a QI specialist will answer questions and offer advice on developing or implementing your QIP, and additional videos to acquire QI basics and tips and tricks to help you create and submit a QIP. This is the end of video one. We hope you join us for video two.